Hey guys, sorry for the delay, but I had to clear some other projects off my workbench. Now I'm ready to get back to finishing off this little Admiral radio. My parts arrived a few days ago. I went ahead and already took them out of the little individual bags they come in. If you're not familiar with how to actually read the markings on these little components, I suggest you leave them in the bags until you're ready to solder each one of them into the uh, radio. For example, this bag is clearly labeled 250 volt, 0.18. On the capacitor, it actually says, there we go, uh, 250V 184K. Well, 184K translates to 18 and then four zeros. So 180,000 picofarads or 0.18 microfarads. That's how they're usually labeled. For example, this has 223, which is two, uh, 22,000 picofarad or 0.022 microfarad. Electrolytics aren't so bad. And then they clearly just say 33 microfarad, for example. Resistors use a color code, usually. This is a 1% resistor, so it's a little bit uh, different than 5% uh, guys you may have seen before. In this case, it's 1. The brown is 1, and the blacks are zeros. Uh, flip this around. Read it going this way. So, brown is a 1, and then 0, 0. Then another one, well that's actually the number of zero, so it's another zero, so it's one zero zero zero. The last band is a tolerance, which is also a one. There's a one percent resistor, so thousand ohms or one kilo ohm, one percent resistor. Uh, you should really um, look these up online uh, if you're not sure how to read these values. And my little explanation here, I'm sure, is not going to be sufficient. Uh, on other resistors, Especially power resistors, they just print it right on there. Uh, like this is 150 ohms. You can see that. So, no guesswork there. All right. Now the tricky bit beyond that is you have to figure out where they actually go into the radio. Uh, it's especially fun, an extra dimension of fun, when somebody else has worked on the radio before you, like in this case. So, for example, on my schematic, it says there's 2.05 microfarad capacitors. Well, you're not going to find one of those in here. What you're going to find is this guy, which is a 0.047, which must have been replaced at some point. And this guy, which is a 0.056, also replaced at some point, I imagine. Either that, or just perhaps the schematic doesn't match the uh, what's actually in the, in the chassis, which I've also seen many times too, especially in that Sentinel TV I just worked on. Um, sometimes there were production run differences, sometimes maybe they just ran out of parts and used what they had on hand that were close enough. So uh, in that case you're going to have to learn how to read a schematic and figure out how to find a, compa a, a component on here, like this R2 here, uh, and figure out where that actually is in here. Um, so in this case R2 is 1 mega ohm half watt. Well, you can hunt around in here and try to find the resistors and look for one that's got the right bands for a 1 mega ohm resistor. Or you got to look what it's connected to. In this case, it's going to, well, this is a little bit easier because it goes to one leg of the only control in this radio, which is the volume control, which is this guy. So if I follow the leads on that, one of them, in fact, I found it already. This white wire here goes over to this resistor, which has brown, green, green on it. Well, a 1 mega ohm resistor should be brown, black, green. This is actually a 1.5 mega ohm resistor, which is not what the schematic calls for. Which puts me in a bit of a bind, like I just had to do with that TV I was mentioning. When you, <laughs> uh, you can leave it in there, um, but you should test the resistors. And if it's off from the marked value, you should really replace it. If it's not, um, you know, I get this measures out about 1.5. I'm going to leave it in there, but when I fire up the radio, if it doesn't play as well as I expect, that would be one of the first things I would go, that I would consider 
swapping out for what the schematic calls for, which is a 1.0 mega ohm. I've, I've looked at a, a lot of these radios, and that it's hard to tell if that's an original or if that's a replacement. It's certainly an old resistor, but you know it doesn't look quite as old as some of these like down here. Now these are bigger because they're power resistors, but they're actually dirtier, and they got you know some like wax on them, probably from old parts. And here's another resistor that looks a bit oldish, but this one looks a little bit shinier and newer. And I already know somebody's worked on this radio, which makes me even more suspect. If they, all these capacitors are, are not quite what the schematic called for. So I wouldn't be surprised if the same individual used the resistor that wasn't quite the same as the original. Which I think is leaning me towards the camp of, I'm going to go off the schematic and put all the parts that are, as they're originally marked on that. Alright, so anyways, we know what that one resistor is right there. And you do the same for the other components. Once you get the hang of this and you start replacing them, you get more and more familiar with it. Hopefully it'll start clicking in as to what's what, how you go from looking on this to on here. Also helps a lot if you figure out which tube is which. Now the label on the top side, not on the bottom side. So for example, this tube socket up here, I gotta flip around. That's the 12SA7, which is the first tube in the chain. The pins on the bottom, Remember I mentioned that octal tubes have that key on them, which you can see here pointing at about 1 o'clock, you know, 12 hour clock. Um, you, you, can, you read them, I'm trying to remember, counterclockwise, no sorry, clockwise from that pin, from that key. So the first one right after that notch is pin 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all around. Which translates to these pins on here. Uh, for example, sorry, battery died in the camera. <laughs> uh, so, so for example, um, pin 8 is this one just to the left of the notch, which is a white wire going through to the top side, which eventually goes to the tuning capacitor and the antenna, just like you see on the schematic here. So far this left point here, pin 8 goes to the antenna and to the tuning capacitor. Now, when you've determined that a component needs to be replaced, uh, two, two methods I use. I have my tools laid out here. One, you can cut out the old part, like for instance this capacitor, and leave a little bit of the old lead hanging there. And then you take the new component and take. Uh, uh, the lead and wrap it around like a nail or a pin and make a corkscrew out of it. Uh, hang on, I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, I twisted this around uh, a little pin and trimmed it short and there we go. Now the idea is simply that you stick that corkscrew over the little lead that's still sticking out like so and then solder it on. Um, one nice thing to do to get this to hold in place is to use a little pair of needle nose pliers and crimp that. And it'll stay in place while you uh, solder it on. Uh, I think that's pretty much the way I'm going to go on this radio because it's not too, uh, it's nothing too fancy. It's not a high end radio or, or an expensive or a rare radio. If it was, like I've done on some of these TVs in my other videos. Uh, or if this is especially like, like there's some ugly repairs on here and there's a big solder glob. What I'll do is use some desoldering braid, solder wick, or solder sucker if you got one, I just don't happen to. And uh, it's, it's a copper braid with uh, some flux on it that really likes to attract, so attract solder. Place this up against the joint, put the iron against it, and it'll literally wick away the solder from the joint. Feed this along as it gets used up, and eventually all the solder will be gone and it'll be down to the bare terminal and the leads and you can then uh, unwrap or pull out the uh, the old leads and uh, clean this up with a little q-tip and some alcohol and it'd be like putting this together again for the first time then you can just feed your lead through this the uh, terminal wrap it around and solder on like they did when they originally built this
Uh, so that's the basics of it. Uh, I'm going to start working on this and uh, I'll pick up on the video again when I've got, uh, I'll show you how to actually solder one of these on I think.